All right, we are here with Shelly Hasselbrink, who is also running for city council. Second term. Uh, yeah. This time you actually have, actually actually have to, to, uh, run, this time. to yeah. run this time, because yeah. uh, there wasn't a lot of opponents last time. Yeah. Um, why don't you introduce yourself okay. uh, to the community? So. Uh, my name is Shelly Hasselbrink. Uh, my husband and I have lived in Los Alamitos since we got married in 1993. We've raised our two sons, Cooper and Carson, who are 23 and 21, uh, all the way through the school district, and now they are away at college. Uh, this is um, my new hobby in life as we are empty nesters and I've had a blast the last four years uh, being on city council. I was mayor last year and it was the greatest job I've ever had and I look forward to doing another four years. You mentioned that being a mayor is the greatest job you ever had and I know you've had some pretty good ones going back to television a few yes. years ago. But um, what, was, what, what surprised you? What, just about the job itself, what were you doing more of that you didn't expect you'd be doing or what are you doing less of that you thought you'd be doing? Um, you know, I, you've, you're always told that when you're, when you're mayor at an at-large city, you're, you know, it's more ceremonial. And I find that wasn't necessarily the case. I mean, they really look to you as, as the leader, as the figurehead, um, not so much among your colleagues because we all had an equal voice, but it was mainly, you know, in the community um, and going to functions. And it was, it, it was very, very fun uh, to be able to get involved in different organizations and different events that I would never have access to or even known about. You mentioned uh, you thought it might be ceremonial. What, part of the difference between like Los Al, uh, which is you, ha you, you vote for the city council, right. but the mayor is serving pretty much as a liaison to the yes. staff, right? Right. And the other people really can't contact the staff or by, um, I don't know, it's legally, but by, yeah. by tradition or whatever, well, by oh, policy. Ba yeah, basically, I mean, we all have equal access to staff. It's basically as far as getting things on the meeting. Uh, the mayor can get something on the agenda with just being the mayor, whereas if you're on council, you need two people or the mayor to sign off on that. That's pretty much about the only extra power. I mean, the mayor does sign all the contracts and everything, but that's after approval of all city council. Okay. Um, so not, not a whole lot more power, a uh, different name badge, and um, just expectations of, of being at different events and representing the city as a sole voice, which is very fun. Something more on the LinkedIn resume. The mayor, the title. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Did I say something? Anyway. Yeah. All right. City budget. Is that probably the, the, the budget and the pension? Is that probably the biggest issue you guys are facing or what would you think is uh, the biggest? Well, the, the, the budget is always, you know, making sure that we're spending the taxpayers' money wisely. Uh, the pension is the number one eater of the, the budget. Uh, before we even get to sit down and figure out what we want to do for next year's budget, we need to look at what our pension liability is and take that money out of the budget, and then we get to figure out what we're going to do with the rest of it. When you say number one, do you know have a percentage of how big of uh, you know? I really don't because it, it it moves monthly, um, if not monthly, at least quarterly, uh, based on what Calpers investments are, how good they're doing, um, what the actuary comes in, how much more we owe, how much less we owe, even though we're paying into it annually. You know, if we're expecting a seven and a half percent return, and then Calpers come back and said, "Well, we kind of missed the mark. We're only a three percent return." All of a sudden, we just had two and a half million dollars added to something that we've never taken any money out of. We're, we've been faithfully paying it down, and because of investments that we have no control over, we now suddenly owe more than we did last year. So, a booming economy with the investments theoretically impacts the city quite a bit. Right. Uh, just and, on that, the right. And, side and alone. one of the issues with Calpers is we could have a booming economy now, but they take a three-year average. So we need to have a booming economy for three years, and we haven't seen that yet. Year number one looks good. Uh, and we're hoping to roll that out for, for two more years so we can start seeing those returns. And that will solve a lot of the problems. This isn't just a city of Los Alamitos problem. This is a statewide problem, not only for cities, but for, for agencies, Orange County Fire Authority, the county. I mean, everybody's talking about pension and the lack of control we have. Uh, as a council, you have to be forward looking. What are like, some of the policies that you guys are doing to try and uh, achieve a sustainable source of revenues? Um, you know, it's it's not a it's not a one shot answer. I mean, we're we're trying to be diverse, so we have revenues coming from different sources. So if something goes away, if we have a big sales tax producer go away and move, um, we're not bankrupt. Uh, we're not putting all of our eggs in one basket. So we're we're trying to look at things uh, with the pension. If we if we pay it early, we get a discount, so we save a little bit of money. It's it's a drop in the bucket, but it's something. So we're trying to be fiscally responsible and and how we would run our homes. Um, and making sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck and still being able to provide the same services and staff that it takes to run the city. The city ultimately is a business. Yes. And so what kind of, since you've been on the council, what kind of smart business moves do you think that the council has made? 
Uh, one of the things is when we refin refinanced Laurel Park, we were able to um, lower our interest rate um, and reduce some of our debt, which was, I think, very, very smart. Um, you know, in doing that, we were also able to get a AAA bond rating, which which helps us in future endeavors and, and looks at, gives us the financial credibility that we need if, if we need to go out to some sort of bond or borrow some money. And I think those are just prudent as we do in our, in our homes. You know, when, when interest rates go down, we refinance. Um, so we're, we're not spending all the money on interest. So I think that was probably our biggest one. And, and that saved us quite a bit of money. And we were able to take that money and refinance into other things. Uh, some of your council, fellow council members were, were stating that uh, they thought a big concern was always like state overreach, unfunded mandates uh, coming down the road. And have you been surprised by any of those? Uh? I haven't been surprised. I've been frustrated by them. I mean, we've had a number of state mandates, um, the obvious ones that have been making the news, but we also have ones that not a lot of people know about, um, organic waste. So now all of our businesses have to have a third bin um, on their property to recycle food waste. Um, that's costing businesses up to 33% an increase in their monthly trash bill. That was a state mandate that sent us down. We have to manage it, we have to implement it, and if we don't, we get fined by it, but they're not gonna support it or fund any part of it. So we have to be the bad guys and explain to our businesses why their trash rates are going up, and it's because of a state mandate. Um, you know, the, the granny flats, um, you know, another state mandate. <coughs> High density housing, another state mandate. Uh, providing homeless shelters in a built-out city where we have no land for anything, another state mandate. And if you don't honor the mandates, you get fined. So it's it's just a lot of, you know, they're, they're trying to solve a lot of problems at a state level by just passing it down through the cities and say, you guys figure it out. And that's the frustrating part of it. The, that kind of tail is over into uh, state overreach and the controversial, I guess, the most controversial move that sure. LaSalle done, the, uh, the opt-out of SB 54, right. uh, Family Values Act, California Values Act. California Values Act, yeah. Um, what are your feelings on that? You know, I've got, I've got two answers for that. I've got a philosophical answer, which um, I'm not in support of sanctuary cities. Um, I believe that we need to give our police um, all the tools they need to keep our streets safe um, and to be able to track criminals and make sure that criminals aren't on our streets. Whether they use those tools or not, that's up to them, but we need to be able to provide them with those tools. Um, so philosophically, I don't want crime on our street, whether they're from undocumented people, whether they're from citizens, whether they're from legal immigrants, I don't want crime on our streets, period. And if you're, if you're in our country and you're committing crimes, it's time to go back home. That, that's just a basic philosophical, fundamental answer for me. Financially, um, you know, we are in the middle of a lawsuit and I certainly don't want to bankrupt the city or have to cut services to fight a lawsuit that it's not going to change the position of the state at all. Um, so we, we've got some decisions to make. Um, I don't know when. There's a lot of moving parts going on right now um, at the federal and the state and the city level. So we're just going to have to play it out and, and see how this moves forward. One of the unforeseen consequences of the whole, that whole issue has been the redistricting. Yes. Attorney up in Malibu taking advantage of a, yes. a quirk in the, the law and making money for himself up and down the state. Yep. It's not only with cities, it's also with school districts. And Everything, any, yeah. Any, any special agency. district, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on the redistricting? Um, I've never been a fan of districts, especially in a city our size. Um, as an elected, it certainly makes my campaign um, trail much smaller. But as a voter, I now only get to vote for 20% of my government. Um, I want to vote for 100% of my government. We have 6,900 registered voters in Los Al, so if you divide that by five, you can do the math, and it's not going to take a whole lot to get elected into office. One of the other problems is, is based on districts, not every district has people living there that are willing to run for office. Now, and that could always change, so how many people are we going to have to appoint versus electing the five best people in that office? Um, so I want to be able to vote for 100% of my government. I don't want, you know, well, that's not my district, so I'm not going to fight as hard for you on that. Um, I'm just going to focus on my district. I think um, it's not the best way to do it. In larger cities, I understand it. Um, but for La Salle, we're just too small. Um, moving on to some other issues. Another one has come up now, and Rob Feldman spoke about it at the recent city council meeting, the 13 acres over in Cyprus, and now the commercial development on the right. area between the racetrack entrance and Costco. Right. Uh, what's the issue for Los Alamitos as you see it, and what are the steps that Los Al can take? 
Um, the issues for La Salle obviously is the additional traffic. On Catella, we own five of the lanes, Cypress owns one of the lanes, but they're bringing all the traffic onto all six of the lanes. Um, and nothing is going out to Cerritos, as I understand. From what correct? I understand, um, now that can change, but right now nothing is going out to Cerritos. So we're going to be responsible for making sure that those streets are maintained and kept up and we don't see any of the revenue or any of the benefits from other than people thinking that that's Los Alamitos, but we don't get to see any of that revenue or any of that sales tax. Um, you know, as far as, you know, we, we have a constant dialogue with Cyprus, but in the end, they can really do what they want. It's their property and it's unfortunate, but um, we just kind of have to you think you have a pretty good relationship with Cyprus right now? I think so. Um, I think with the electives and, and with the staff there, I mean, I certainly do. Um, and we can talk openly about things, about our challenges and our issues. And, you know, we can address the elephants in the room because... What issues do you have in common with Cyprus? Um, Where they need you to work with them? Uh, you or know, it behooves I, them to work, to work it, with them? It just behooves us because we're next-door neighbors. And I think it's just, it, all, it always works best if the cities the Seal Beach, Cyprus, La Salle, you know, that we just all kind of uh, get along because I think we can solve issues better together than we can separated. Um, they really don't need us for anything and we really don't need them for anything except, you know, I mean, it's very easy to tell a resident, you know what, that's Cyprus, we can't control it. It's, it's an easy way out. But I think as we build relationships, uh, we become more sensitive to each other's um, problems. Um, and issues, and so when they're going and developing or we're going and developing, we'll take into account, well, that's really gonna affect Cyprus. And if you work with the people and you like working with the people, you're a little bit more sensitive to how it really is gonna affect them and try to alleviate that. As you're answering that, I was just thinking, like, uh, would, would the redistricting affect an issue like that? Because if you were doing Carrier Row, and, which, and that would probably impact Carrier Row more than anybody else. Right. Um, would your other fellow council people who don't have to worry about that district in terms of from election standpoint would they be as supportive of the action the ones that i work with now um the four that are working with me now absolutely they would absolutely because and we have all agreed that this is about the overall big picture of the city of los alamitos um, and when we went through the redistricting process we were all on the same page about you know what it could divide councils about this isn't my district that's your district but i think the count the sitting council now is very much for the bigger picture, and this is gonna affect the city as a whole. Um, future councils, I don't know, but right now I'm very comfortable with, it's not a carrier row issue, it's a city of Los Alamitos issue. From one major street to the other, the Los Al Boulevard improvements. Mm -hmm. You've gone from two lanes to three lanes temporarily, but now down to two lanes right. for, for a stretch of it, not the entire right. thing. Uh, what's been your feedback so far, and what are your thoughts on what's been happening? You know, it, it was two lanes before the construction. The only reason that we went to three lanes was when we were doing construction is we were gonna to have to close down one of those lanes and we didn't wanna close it down to one lane. So the plan was never to go to three lanes. We actually had the discussion about it, I think two years ago, uh, where we could have gotten some grant money if we would have kept it over to three lanes. Uh, we realized that that was gonna become a very fast superhighway uh, with a lot of businesses and the pedestrians and, and students walking to and from school. So the plan was never to keep it at three lanes. Uh, because the construction took longer than we thought and it came in pieces. People got used to the three lanes, but the plan has always been to go back to two lanes. Um, we don't want a super highway. Uh, we, we want people to be able to go, you know, 35, 40 miles an hour. And when you have three lanes, you're more uh, eager to go a little bit faster. And so I think it's good for the businesses. Um, and not that when you're driving down a street, you're going so slow, you're gonna, hey, I'm gonna stop in that street. But I just think it's, it's a business district and, and faster is never better on any of those streets. Well, I know in the city of the brew kitchen, right. outside, it's like traffic slower, it's, it's a little nicer. It's, yeah. just, it's not as noisy. You don't get, like yeah, you don't get the noise. Um, I, I just think it's just good. I mean, you wanna create this little intimate downtown area and you can't do that going 50 miles an hour. It's, it's, I think it's looking pretty nice yeah. like, as those trees mature and uh, no, I think it's... Are you guys comfortable with it? The, you the know, I'm happening? comfortable with it. We got we got a little bit of complaints that people don't like the signs, that they're a little dated. But, uh, you know, we had, we had plenty of outreach. I think we had 10 town hall meetings, uh, very poorly attended. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is, and I think it looks nice. It's, it's definitely an improvement. Uh, when the banners get up, we have the banner program going now. The banners get up, you know, things are lit up at Christmas. It's going to look spectacular, and it's going to bring us that downtown on a very, very major street. It's going to give us that downtown look, that intimate small town look that we wanted. 
What uh, school district is obviously a big part of the Los Alamitos community. Sure. And they are the biggest governmental agency here in West Orange County. Right. How does this impact Los Alamitos? What have what has been the best thing about working with the district? What do you think needs improvement? You know, the best thing about working with the district, and I've said this before, you can't have a good school district. You can't have good schools without a good city, and you can't have a good city without good schools. They go hand in hand. Um, Los Alamitos School District is the landowner for most of our open space. Uh, the city has a few parks, um, but, you know, we, we highly depend on the school working with us to be able to allow us to use McAuliffe and Oak and the gym in different areas so we can provide our programs. Um, you know, I think, you know, we, we constantly work to improve our communication as an elected level and also as a staff level. Um, it's a little bit harder at an elected level because you've got people moving around, people coming into office, out of office. Um, I, I think it's, um, we have a very good relationship now. We're, we're very open. We're looking at bigger picture. We're looking at what the city does best as far as providing services versus the school district, AKA LAFE, mm -hmm. and what they do best providing services. And we're gonna, we come to a mutual agreement about, you know, here's what you're gonna offer and here's what we're gonna offer. And I think that's very healthy because overall, the residents benefit from that. Um, as far as, as future, I think just constant improvement of the schools, I mean, you know, the number one reason why people move to Los Alamitos is because of the school district. You know, we, we get that reputation because of the schools. Right. So, you know, to say that we can't be, you know, in favor of school improvement and everything, that that's our future too. That's why people move in here. You're not finding, you know, older people moving in here and, and paying a premium for their housing. You're finding young families move in because of the school district. So I think it behooves the city to, you know, constantly support the school district, um, stay out of the education game, because we're not educators, we're politicians, um, and let them educate and let us run the city, and together we can just make this a spectacular community as it has been. The other big entity that Lozelle has to deal with, it's like we're surrounded by big entities we are. here, it's like, uh, is the, the base. Yep. What do you think has gone well with the base? I know there's issues. They seem sure. to be, a lot of them have seemed to have been resolved in recent, but what are the, what are the good things about working with the base? What, are, what does the base bring to the city? And what needs to be worked on, improved? Um, you know, the base brings to the city. We're, I think, the only base now left in Orange County. Uh, we're one of the few left in Southern <coughs> California. And we're, we're real proud of that. Um, it brings a level of patriotism. You know, when you, when you go to a restaurant and you see, you know, the soldiers there, that's really cool. Um, to be able to go to 4th of July and sit there with 16,000 people and you're sitting on an active military base on a runway where we deploy thousands of soldiers every year watching fireworks as the army band is saying you know doing the star spangled banner that that's awesome you you know you can't buy that type of entertainment um we have you know last year was rough uh, when i was mayor we had you know change in command which we do at the base and um it, it got rough we weren't sure about the future of being able to do events on the base um, along with the base and Colonel Bond while he was there, uh, we worked really, really hard to fix that, you know, because, you know, they're military, they're, they're inundated with regulations and how they can do business and how people can make money and not make money. Um, so we had to just kind of work through those regulations and find a happy medium. And I think to the resident, they don't see any difference. We had race on the base this year, we had the 4th of July and not understanding the hoops we had to jump through to make sure that happened when you walked onto those events the people never saw the difference it, it was just as it's always been and i i give a lot of um, kudos to to the base and i mean we were talking to sacramento and they were very supportive they understand that that military bases need to be community partners now um, especially somebody like jftb who's not a residential base um, you know, they, they want people on the base. Um, and I think, you know, we're in a really, really good position now moving forward. I don't see any huge obstacles coming up. Um, they're, they're not gonna be closing down. In fact, they're, they're adding things to the base, which is really exciting. And um, I think we just get to um, benefit off the patriotism and saying that, you know, we're half of our land mass is on an active military base that's thousands of soldiers are protecting our, our freedom. What are uh, issues in the campaign that uh, you think are important, most important that need to be discussed and you haven't heard much, you don't hear the people asking you questions about? Or? Um, I, I think of it as long, uh, you know, how, how can we make sure that our city stays great? How can, you know, with, with all the outside entities coming and kind of picking at us, how can we make sure that Los Alamitos stays why people lived here? 
Um, and there's a number of, you know, the, the pension liability, which a lot of people don't understand, but it's a lot of money and, and we need to educate, uh, making sure our employees are happy and they want to be here for long term. Um, it's hard in the small city because we're considered a starter city. We don't, we don't pay a premium for salaries. Um, but, but people can come in, police officers come, come in straight out of the academy, get a lot of terrific experience, um, train for SWAT, train as a detective, and then move on to bigger and better opportunities. And, and we have to realize that, that we're not going to have city staff here for 30 and 40 years. We're just not that type of city. So I think it's try, trying to can, you know, maintain that sustainability on a staff level as well so they can take what our history was and make sure that we repeat the good stuff and get rid of the bad stuff. Um, and getting the details, I'm not sure if most residents you know, understand a lot of the details. They just wanna make sure that their life, their quality of life stays the same, that they're paying a premium for their house, and regardless of what we have to do, their quality of life stays the same. All right, you got your last one minute elevator pitch for the voters here. So, yep. uh, you know, I, the camera and do your thing. I've, I've given you a good four years, I hope. Um, you might not agree with everything um, that I have done. Um, hopefully you agree with on the major issues. Um, I've been married for 25 years. My husband and I don't agree on everything. If we did, it'd be scary. So I'm just hoping that I've earned your vote again. Um, I'd like to do this another four years and I think we can do some pretty spectacular things. Shelly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.